One game is finished, but now we move on to the next. Yep, we're done with... Hmm. So let's get started. We're back at it again with the Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. We finished this game. Now it's time we move on to this. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies. Released in 2013 for the Nintendo 3DS. Japan got a physical release, but we ended up getting it digitally because Capcom had their dork age. And it was not a pleasant age at that. Time to get started with Ace Attorney Dual Destinies. These are dark times, where the law has been reduced to rubble, and it's up to us to restore it to its former glory. Yeah, I know what you mean. It looks like your target finally decided to make a move. Don't you worry, I've got a trusty new partner on board. been with us for half a year, though I can hardly believe it. Anyway, her power will be our greatest weapon. <laughs> Are you alright, miss? <laughs> yeah, it's for this very reason I returned. Time to bring it to an end. Episode 1, Turnabout Countdown. <laughs> the best thing about bombs is how they erase and destroy without discretion. All I have to do is pin everything on that little girl. December 17th, 9.22 AM. District Court. 
Defendant Lobby Number 5. Hmm. Nope. Not feeling nervous at all. It's amazing what a girl can get used to. Even a tense atmosphere like this is no biggie. You doing okay, Athena? Oh, Apollo! Yeah. Yeah, doing great. Like, I'm a little tune great. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Although, I could have sworn I heard your voice crack for a second there. Oof. I'm that transparent, huh? Cracking? No, my voice isn't cracking. Nerves of steel here, I tell you. This is Apollo Justice. He's a fellow lawyer at the office I work for. Apollo is the lead for the defense on this case, but I'm going to be there at the bench with him, doing what I can to help out. I'll do whatever it takes to defend Junie. Speaking of steel, how are you holding up? That explosion really did a number on you. I'm just happy that you're okay, Athena. Although, I can't pretend I have no connection to this case. That's why I'm going to see to it that Juniper's name is clear. And I'm sure you feel much the same way. You got that right. I won't rest until Junie is completely cleared of all suspicion. Apollo. Fina. Thank you for doing this for me. Junie! Hey, are you okay? Sorry about that. I always seem to go into coughing fits whenever I get nervous. This kind of thing never happens <coughs> at home in the forest, though. <coughs> this is Juniper Woods. She's my dear, dear childhood friend, and she's also our client for this case. The news keeps repeating that Junie is the alleged bomber, but that's ridiculous. There's no way Junie would do anything like that. I brought you a little snack, Nina. Just a little something from my garden. Hey, thanks. So, um, this is an orange or tangerine? It's an orange. My grandma says that orange is the color of strength and endurance. Oh, I get it. Strength for the trial, right? Junie, you're always so good to me. Jeez, look at me. Standing here clutching an orange to my chest with tears in my eyes. Well, don't you worry. We'll be so powerful in there, they won't know what hit him. Right, Apollo? Yeah, that's right. Come with me. This is one trial. We just can't lose. Uh. He passed out. Apollo! Apollo? Uh. Blood is seeping through his bandages. One of his wounds must have reopened. All this time, he was trying to put on a brave face, but he was really overdoing it. Mr. Justice! Huh? The trial is about to start, sir. Please proceed to the courtroom. What? Now? But Apollo's in no state to defend. Uh, I... I have to... Defend Juniper. What are we gonna do? The trial's about to start with or without us. There's only one other option I can think of at the time like this. But even if I called him now, he'd never get here in time. No, wait. There's something else I can do. Apollo, give me all the evidence for the case. Huh? What are you gonna do? Bailiff? Y yes, miss? The defense would like to submit a substitution of attorney petition. Fina! You're not seriously. You just concentrate on getting better. I'll defend Juni. Juni. All by yourself? Athena, stop for a second. Think about what you're saying. You've never once taken a case on alone before, right? No hay problema. I can handle it. I think. But I guess it's really up to you, Juni. Would you be okay with me taking over? Um, sure. I believe in you, Thena, and that's enough for me. You're worried for me, aren't you? To be honest, I'm pretty nervous, too. I think my heart might just burst out of my chest. 
but you're in no shape to stand at the bench now, so you'll just have to leave it to me. Alright, I can see your mind's made up anyway. I hate it that I can't be there, but I know you'll give it your utmost to defend Juniper. You bet I will. Rest assured of that. My name is Athena Sykes. I'm still just a newbie, but I'm a lawyer. This is only the second time I've taken the lead in a defense case. It'll be the first time I stand up there alone, though. But I have to do this, and I'm definitely not about to let anything bad happen to Junie. December 17th, 9.46 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number five. All rise. Court is now in session for the trial of Juniper Woods. The, de the defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is also ready, Your Honor. Uh-huh. And what is the meaning of this? I was under the impression that Mr. Red Monkey would be my opponent today. Yes, well, a substitution of attorney petition was submitted just a few moments ago. Due to the explosion in the courthouse yesterday, Mr. Justice is unable to continue. I see, I see. Not at all surprised you used that as an excuse to run away. Be right back. Sorry about that. An important phone call. Let us continue. With me as an adversary, who wouldn't want to feign illness in order to escape? What? The nerve of that guy! I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. Well, I would if I wasn't so nervous. Ah, uh, this arrogant jerk. You arrogant jerk. No, widget. Is my hearing getting worse? I could have sworn I heard the defense say something just now. No, you didn't hear anything at all, especially not from me. Hmm, how odd. I could have sworn I also heard something. Oh, that would be my indispensable partner, Widget. He sometimes blurred out what I'm thinking. <laughs> well then, if that's the case, then it is a clear contradiction to what you just stated. A contradiction? You just stated that you said nothing. However, if that device of yours says what you're thinking, then you indeed said I was. What was it? Elegance at work? Eee! Actually, it was arrogant jerk. At any rate, what does it matter if it's a red monkey or a yellow monkey facing me? No fresh out of law school rookie can defend this witness. Mr. Payne, I believe that's enough. Let us get back to the case. Of course, Your Honor. I'm more than ready to show this little girl why they call me the Rookie Humiliator. And for anyone wondering, this is Winston Payne's brother. Winston probably retired. I knew it. He really is an arrogant jerk. Arrogant jerk. Miss Sykes, if you continue to insult the prosecution, I will remove you from this court. Ugh, I'm very sorry. It was just a knee-jerk reaction. Yeah, do I blame her? Now then, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, if you please. Thank you, Your Honor. Now then, the incident occurred yesterday here at this very courthouse in courtroom number four. At the time, the trial for a certain bombing was being held in courtroom number four. Ah, yes, I was presiding over that trial as well. And Mr. Justice was there as a lawyer for the defense. A bomb that was being presented as evidence suddenly went off during the trial. It was a terrible incident, and courtroom number four was completely destroyed. Fortunately, we were able to start evacuation procedures before the explosion occurred. Just a few seconds more and it would have turned into a horrific loss of human life. But there was, in fact, one death, was there not? That is correct, Your Honor. When courtroom number four was examined after the blast, the body of Detective Candace Arm was discovered. She was to take the stand as a witness later in the trial. I suppose she wasn't able to evacuate in time. What a terrible tragedy. I must admit, I stumbled at least ten times myself before I was able to escape. 
Maybe the court should see about getting you even shorter robes. The victim's body was found near the entrance to the courtroom. I suspect she stayed until the very end to help guide the others out safely. Your Honor, allow me to submit as evidence the victim's autopsy report and details about the bomb. Arm's autopsy report was added to the court record, along with a stuffed animal. An elephant? Okay, I know how this works. All evidence for the trial is filled in the court filed in the court record. When I want to check something out, I just use the R button. I'd better take a peek later. Now then, please call the accused to the witness stand. Defendant, are you feeling all right? You're looking a bit pale. I'm so sorry. I was feeling a bit weak when I first arrived here at the courthouse. But I... I'm all right. Junie's really giving it her all. I'd better make sure I do the same. <laughs> if we could please proceed. Your name and occupation, defendant. Juniper Woods. I'm a high school student. Miss Woods, can you confirm you were in the courthouse on the day in question? Yes, I came to know Apollo Justice through my friend, Thena. And so, I was there yesterday to watch his trial and lend my support. Something's wrong. Judy's really scared. <laughs> Did you know I'm also known as the Defendant Humiliator? It looks like I have yet another chance to show everyone how I earned that moniker. <sighs> Does this arrogance know no bounds? I have to protect Junie no matter what. Hey, you arrogant... I mean, Prosecutor Payne! Hmm? What is it? Do you want me to demonstrate why I'm known as the Rookie Humiliator instead? Deep breaths, Adina. Don't let him get to you. Prosecutor Payne, Junie is telling the truth. Mr. Justice also backed up her claim when we saw him in the defendant lobby. And Junie, he said that he was glad to get the lotus root you gave him, too. He was? My grandma says lotus root is good for your eyes. She says they can even help you see into the future. They can? Then that's the perfect present for a lawyer. And if that's true, I guess he must not have eaten them. Mmm, a sweet meat girl like this blowing a courtroom to bits? I must say it's very hard to believe. Objection. Now, now, Your Honor, don't let her seemingly innocent appearance fool you. The defendant had a motive for committing this crime. That's not true. I don't have any kind of motive. And I, I didn't even know the lady who was killed. I admit the investigation didn't turn up any connection between the victim and defendant. However, that doesn't matter. The only thing that does is her objective was the destruction of courtroom number four itself. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Why in the world would Miss Woods want to do that? Mm-hmm. That's a very good question coming from a novice such as yourself. But first, a question for the defendant. Have you ever been brought up on false charges? What? Why, yes. Yes, I have. And did that experience cause you to harbor a grudge against the court system? Objection. Now wait just one minute! If that kind of thing was a motive for blowing things up, then every one of our clients would turn into bombers! That's a valid point. We wouldn't have a, have a single courthouse left standing in the land. I can see the accused isn't the only one who might bear resentment against the courts, but Miss Woods is the only person who could have committed this crime. Why? Because we have found some decisive evidence that proves the defendant's guilt. Decisive, huh? I'll believe it when I see it. It involves a very unique aspect of the bomb itself, Your Honor. And what exactly was so unique about it? Hmm. Why don't we have Miss Sykes answer that question? Huh? Me? Mm hmm. I noticed that you appear to be very nervous and, well, gentlemen that I am. I'd like to offer you the chance to gain some confidence with such an easy question. Could he be any more condescending? Really? What a thoroughly unpleasant man. Alice for loser. Huh. <laughs> what did it just say? Nothing. Not a single thing. Now let's see. 
What was I supposed to do at a time like this? Oh, I know. The court record. The information I need is somewhere in the court record. All right, Miss Sykes, let's hear your answer. What was unique about the bomb that blew up the courtroom? Was it because it was inside a stuffed animal? Mr. Payne, what kind of simpleton do you take me for? It was stuffed inside a stuffed animal. Its evil intentions covered up by a cute exterior. <laughs> Very good. Have a cookie. The bomb that went off in the courtroom was indeed hidden inside a stuffed animal. There. How do you like that? Not bad, huh? I am fine. Just like I said from the start. I can do this. Yes, as I recall, the bomb was inside a stuffed animal the whole time. I never even got to take a look at it. But what connection does this impish elephant have with a defendant? The answer to that question lies in another piece of evidence, which I have here. And what, pray tell, is this? It appears to be a little singed. It's a tale, Your Honor. The tale of a four victim of the explosion. This is incredible. Are you saying it's Detective Arm's tale? Your Honor is so very close, but no. It belongs to a stuffed animal. It's called the Phony Fanty. A rather unpleasant name, if you ask me. He's the mascot for a campaign to eliminate false evidence and false charges, is he not? Exactly. His motto is phony evidence is just trunked up. That's so wrong on so many levels. The phony fanny's tail is made of vinyl cloth, and we found something very interesting on its surface. The defendant's fingerprints. What? The phony fanny provided the prosecution with all the evidence we needed. It clearly proves that the accused handled the bomb. I... Uh, yeah. I do admit, this actually looks better than it was on 3DS. So much better. But that doesn't make any sense. Why would Judy's fingerprints be on it? Mm, that does appear to be pretty irrefutable evidence. The court accepts it into evidence. Miss Woods, do you have an explanation for this? I... I don't understand. I... How about you, Miss Sykes? Do you have any plausible explanation to refute this decisive piece of evidence? Well, I, uh, I can't do it. I can't think of a single thing, but I'd better come up with something, for Junie's sake. If you can't produce an answer, we can always go straight to the ruling if you prefer. No, I have to say something, fast! Oh no, I can't get my voice to work. Why now, of all times? I thought I overcame this already. Maybe I'm still not ready to stand in court. As you can see, there is no room for debate. OBJECTION! Why, it's you! Sorry it took me so long to get here, Athena. Apollo explained the whole thing to me over the phone. He asked me to come help you out in this place. Thanks for coming. I have to admit it. I hate to admit it. But I was having a real rough time on my own. Oh, I don't know. I think you were doing just fine, all things considered. And you hung in there, giving me enough time to get here. Now let's turn things around. You got it, boss. <laughs> Look who showed up out of the blue. If it isn't Mr. Phoenix Wright, you always manage to surprise me. Your Honor, Mr. Payne has called for an early ruling. But I believe there are still many things that need to be deliberated. How did Miss Wood's fingerprints wind up on the stuffed animal tail? 
how is the bomb even detonated? Until these questions are answered, I assert it's impossible for a fair ruling to be made. Hmm, you are absolutely right. Let us continue from where we left off. I assume you have no objections, Mr. Payne. <laughs> Not at all, Your Honor. Miss Woods really looks like she's having a hard time. Junie's really struggling, Mr. Wright. I get the sense she's afraid of the courtroom itself. Because of yesterday? Yeah, it was understandably very traumatic for her. Poor thing. Poor thing. And here she is back at the courthouse again, being so brave. I'd like to make a request, Your Honor. If at all possible, I'd like to have Miss Woods rest in the lobby. Hmm. Given the defendant's condition. Very well, I grant special permission. You go get some rest, Junie, and leave the rest to us. Okay, thank you. Sorry about this. Phoenix Wright, I've been looking forward to meeting you. It's been a while, Mr. Payne. <laughs> You're more clueless than I heard. I do believe you mean, how do you do? For I am Gaspin Payne. I am the younger brother of your long-standing rival, Winston Payne. What? Long-standing rival? When will we ever rivals, let alone long-standing? You'll see, Mr. Wright. I will cleanse Winston of the disgrace he met with at your hands. <sighs> Looks like this world pain is going to be as thoroughly unpleasant as the other. <laughs> Your Honor, the prosecution would now like to call a decisive witness to the stand. The witness will testify as to how the accused detonated the bomb in the courtroom. Very well. Please call your witness, Mr. Payne. Witness, your name and occupation, please. Witness? Name, Tetanate. Occupation, bomb disposal specialist. Oh my, what a strange robotic voice you have. Speech synthesis via typing, it is the same as me talking. He sounds exactly like a robot. Can't you speak in a normal manner? I can. He can? But I do not like to speak. Speaking is inefficient. Energy expenditure, speaking, greater than typing. Understand? Hmm, what an odd witness. Mr. Tanate was in charge of the bomb the, for the trial and was there when it went off. Being a bomb squad specialist, do you have any relation to the victim? Negative. I first met the girl while on this job. Many people are employed by the police. I know only a fraction of them. However, I was shocked when I first discovered the body of the victim. Shocked? I was the first one on the scene after the explosion. I went there to ensure safety, but I ended up discovering a dead body. So he was the first to discover the body, was he? He is here to testify about the circumstances surrounding the moment of the explosion. Very well. The court will hear Mr. Tenet's testimony. But at the very least, show this court some respect and remove that face guard witness. <laughs> Let the testimony begin. When the bomb went off. The bomb was originally disarmed by me, then transported here as evidence. Bomb name, HH-3000, operated by timer or with a remote. I was watching from the gallery when I suddenly became alarmed. I saw that the bomb's timer was counting down. So even though the bomb was supposed to be disarmed, it somehow got switched on? Precisely. Activating the timer is very simple. One, connect wires. Two, switch on timer. A monkey could do it. I am sure even you would be able to, Mr. Wright. <sighs> I guess this makes you the blue monkey in this barrel of fun, boss. <clears throat> I now like to begin my cross-examination. Huh? Mr. Tonate, what is that? HH-3000, a.k.a. a bomb. A bomb Great googly moogly! Yeah! Mr. Tonate, I demand that you disarm at this instant! Disassembly complete. Hmm. 5.3 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds short of my personal best. Are you trying to give me a heart attack? I'm not exactly a spring chicken, you know. This is an exact replica of the HH-3000. It is used to practice disarming bombs. Disarm, success, explosion, failure. An exact replica of the bomb that exploded, is it? So that's what it looked like. 
I submitted a photograph of the real bomb taken just before the trial. Dimensions. Height 10, width 10, dimension 10, weight 12 pounds, a perfect replication. Your bomb does appear to be a very good copy indeed. Yes, however, I could not replicate the detonation mechanism. It has a very puzzling wiring setup. It is regrettable. I could not replicate it. Witness, that's enough. There's no need to replicate anything here. Updating the court record. And now if the defense would begin their cross-examination. Hmm? Where has Miss Sykes gone to? Athena, you can come out now. Okay, Mr. Wright. Let's get to work. I guess you were pretty scared, huh? What? I don't know what you're talking about. She was about to bolt. Hey, put a sock in it, Widget. As transparent as ever. Now let's see. Where were we? Where were we? We were at the cross-examination. Oh, cross-examination. Of course. She seems disoriented. I wonder if she's alright. Maybe I should ask Athena if she remembers how to cross-examine to help her focus. Um, Athena, you remember how to conduct a cross-examination, right? What? Of course I do. What kind of lawyer would I be if I didn't? Now, now, don't get upset. What do you say to humoring me with a little review? You got it. Basically, we examine a witness's testimony and compare it against the court record, searching carefully for any inconsistencies. This green text represents a witness's testimony. We can use the left analog to advance the next statement and the L to go back to their previous statement. Paying close attention to the testimony, we should keep an ear out for anything strange and be prepared to present our case via the court record. The court record contains information on all the evidence we have at our disposal. We can use it to look for facts that conflict with what the witness has said and present any counter evidence we find to refute their statement. And what if nothing conflicts with the witness's testimony? Well, that's when we press the witness for more information. Find any inconsistencies or lies in their testimony and reveal them to the court. That's what cross-examination is all about. Looks like you remember it just as I taught it. And it was a nice refresher course for me. If you can't find any contradictions, and you flub up too often, don't be afraid to ask me for help. Press X when the option to consult with me appears. I'll let you know when I think the suspicious statement is. Sounds good. I'll be counting on you if I get in a bind. All right, it's cross-examination time. Cross-examination. When the bomb went off. The bomb was originally disarmed by me, then transported here as evidence. Bomb name HH3000, operated by timer or with a remote. I was watching from the gallery when I suddenly became alarmed. I saw that the bomb's timer was counting down. You were lying, buddy. Objection! Exactly. So you say you saw the bombs countdown? Is that right? Of course. I clearly saw it counting down to zero. And I say that you are clearly lying. What are you talking about? There is no way you could have seen the bomb's timer. After all, the bomb was concealed inside a stuffed animal. Mr. Tenet, how can you claim to know the bomb was about to go off when you couldn't even see the timer? What? No! That does seem like a glaring inconsistency indeed. Witness, how do you explain this? Well, I... I... Ooh, that was great, Mr. Wright. You found a contradiction right off the bat. Always remember, Athena. When you find an inconsistency in a witness's testimony, there's always a reason behind it. It could be a lie, a hidden meaning, a secret. Whatever it is, it's up to us to dig it out. And pointing out every contradiction we find is the best way to do it, right, boss? Now the question is, what can we dig out of Mr. Tanay? Well, let me see. I, uh, no, 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 there must be some mistake. Oh, yes, yes, of course, I remember now. The sound, I knew because of the sound. Sound? What sound? When the timer of this type of bomb is switched on, it beeps softly. Beep, beep, beep. It is the sound of the bomb counting down. A beeping noise, you said. I suppose it would be possible to notice that even with the bomb inside the stuffed animal. I simply made a mistake. My bad. Objection! How in the world did you hear such a tiny little sound all the way from the gallery? Listening for the sound of a bomb's timer is an integral part of my work. I constantly undergo training so that I will never miss it. 
I hardly think training would help you hear something so soft from so far away. What now? Are you making light of the fine science of disarming bombs? It is a solemn mission that I put my life on the line to perform. What kind of specialist would I be if I could not hear a bomb's timer? It's not like disassemb- It's not like disassembling a toaster, you know? Now he's just showing off. You keep asserting that the sound was too tiny to hear, but the only tiny thing here is your skill as a lawyer. Being mistrustful is not an attractive quality, you know. And you're just overflowing with attractive qualities, are you? Or perhaps you have some proof that Mr. Tenet did not hear the sound. Well, no, but it still seems totally suspect. But it's going to be really hard to prove that he didn't hear something. If I have this correct, the prosecution's argument is that someone reactivated the bomb before it was brought into the courtroom. While I don't, what I don't understand, Mr. Payne, is why you believe that person to be Miss Woods. That's simple, Your Honor. Mr. Tinney happened to be there when it happened. He was there when the defendant rearmed the bomb. What's this now? It happened before the trial started. It was when Detective Arm and I were transporting the bomb. We brought the bomb to the lobby for the defense. Bomb equals evidence. The lawyer wanted to see it before the start of the trial. Looking for a chance to get at the bomb, Miss Woods was already there in that lobby. Her goal was surely to rearm the bomb and steal the remote switch. The remote switch? Yes, the switch that controls the bomb remotely. Duh. It has been missing ever since the incident. Missing remote switch? As in the court record. I am partially to blame. I left the bomb and remote on top of the transport case. And they were rearmed and stolen while I was talking with the lawyer. The defendant then used the remote from inside the courtroom to start the time. Objection! How can you assert so unequivocally that the bomb was rearmed in the lobby? Objection. The bomb was safely secured in the transport case. The only time it was outside of the case was in that lobby. Therefore, one that was the one and only opportunity anyone had a meddle with it. Someone other than Mr. Tanay could have opened the case and taken the bomb out. Impossible. The transport case is assigned exclusively to me. Do you see this number here? That is my identification number. And I have the only key that can open the case. Bomb transport case added. Nevertheless, Mr. Payne's assertion is nothing more than conjecture. You have no proof that it was Miss Woods who stole the remote switch. And by the same token, you have no proof that it wasn't her. But what I do have is a piece of evidence that proves the defendant handled the bomb. Ah, that tail! 5 minutes, 24 seconds, 2.3 de dexaseconds. The defense's advantage lasted a mere 5 minutes. Ugh, talk about a rotten hand. As long as they have her fingerprints as their trump card, I'm at a big disadvantage. Hmm. It appears we will have to hear from the defendant herself once more. I wholeheartedly agree, Your Honor. I would like to recall Miss Woods to the stand. I trust you have no objections, Mr. Wright. I'm worried about her condition, but we do need her testimony. On the, on the other hand, I'm not sure I want to make Athena mad. I can read your feelings, you know, boss. Guess there's no hiding from her, huh? Don't worry. I know we need her testimony. But if anybody picks on her again, they'll pay. Guess she's already at anger level one. Don't worry. I'll stop the proceedings before I let anything bad happen to her. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. In that case, I will take my leave. But before I do, there is just one more thing, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright, is it? Me? Yes? Dismantling bombs is my job. Dismantling the case is yours. Do you think you can handle it? I look forward to seeing you try. <sighs> this guy's hiding something. I just know it. Now, if you will excuse me. Bailiff? Please go out to the lobby and bring back the defendant. Junie. Hi, Tina. She looks even worse off than before. 
Don't worry, Junie. We're here for you. Thanks, Tina. And I'll do my best, too. You blew up the courtroom because you bear resent me against the courts, correct? No! Of course not! <coughs> I... What's that you say? I can barely hear you. I... I... haven't done anything wrong! This prosecutor's scary! Objection. What an impudent little girl! Stop acting innocent and tell the truth! This is getting ugly! You rearmed the bomb because you wanted to blow up the courthouse. Admit it. That's why you went to the lobby when Mr. where Mr. Justice was. Isn't that right? Uh, ah. Mr. Wright, can I go hear that prosecutor's match? What? Of course not. Do we have to review courtroom manners 101 again? We can't let a creep like that bullies that bullies innocent girls like this off so easily. I haven't forgotten about how he treated you. Don't worry about me, just help Junie. Her heart's crying out. She's so scared, so very scared. Looks like Athena's picking something up with her heightened sense of hearing. And it sounds like this time, it's the voice of Miss Woods' heart. Don't deny it. You stole the remote switch and used it in the courtroom, didn't you? Objection! Your Honor, please put a stop to this. Mr. Payne is badgering the defendant. Yes, Miss Woods does seem quite frightened. Mr. Payne, I ask that you behave more like a gentleman. Ah, but don't you know, Your Honor, there is no more a gentleman in this world than I. Ah, I said a gentleman or even a gentleman would behave like he does. Don't let that rude ruffian win. Athena! How dare you call a gentleman such as I a rude ruffian? I'll have you know I attend a manners class every Saturday. I'm more than just a mere gentleman. I'm a genteel man. Not when you're terrorizing a young lady, you're not. I demand my money back when that manners class if I were you. <laughs> I should probably be the adult here and stop the two of them, but... Mr. Payne, that will be enough. Certainly, Your Honor. No further questions. Let's move on to the defendant's testimony. Miss Woods, please share with the court what you were doing when the bomb went off. Witness testimony, when the bomb went off. Well, that day, <coughs> I was watching from the gallery. The bomb went off, and rubble started falling. It fell on top of me. Junie's clear near in pain, being forced to recall the bombing like this. She can't even get her words out. This isn't gonna work. So what now? Hey, wait a minute. Even if she can't vocalize what she wants to say, we can listen to what's inside her heart. Yes, now's the perfect time to use Athena's power. You can hear it, can't you, Athena? The cries of Miss Woods' heart. Yes, and they sound incredibly strained. She's so scared, I think she could collapse in any second. Athena has a unique ability, you see. With her finely tuned sense of hearing, she can hear the words of a witness's heart. In essence, she can see how a person's really feeling from the tone of their voice. Guess it's all up to Athena and her special ability now. Athena, I want you to use the analytical psychology you study and listen to the testimony of Miss Woods' heart. Okay, boss. I'll give it a go. After all, this is the whole reason I put all that effort into studying analytical psychology. Off gets? Let's do it. So your holographic thingamabob can show us how Miss Woods is feeling, right? In a nutshell, yes. The emotions and images that I picked up on just now while listening to her testimony, I can enter all of that in the widget and use the mood matrix to analyze them. Commence mood matrix system. Look at the detail. These mood markers here reflect fluctuations in Junie's emotions. When she feels happy or is enjoying the memory, the happy marker will light up. When she feels angry or frustrated, the anger marker will react. When she feels sadness or is frightened by a memory, the sad marker will blink. 
And when she feels surprised or confused, the surprised marker will let us know. So with your special ability in Wigdish's Mood Matrix program, we can track how Ms. Woods is feeling as she testifies. Talk about the wonders of technology. Yup, now let's give it a shot. I'm picking up on some kind of discord or noise in Junie's heart. Noise level. See here? This is what the noise looks like in the Mood Matrix. It's a result of inconsistencies between her testimony and her feelings. If we can pinpoint these inconsistencies, the noise level should drop. Okay, it's time to listen to Ms. Woods' true testimony. Mood Matrix online. Well, that day, I was watching from the gallery. <laughs> the bomb went off, and rubble started falling. It fell on top of me. I think I have a good grasp on Junie's emotional state now. This power of Athena is incredible. And I'm seeing an unexpected emotion that's inconsistent with the content of her testimony. What? Already? I fell on top of me. Look at this. When she says it fell on top of me, the happy marker's reacting. Well, look at that. That is odd. There must be a reason for this contradictory emotion. We just need to do some digging. When you find an unexpected emotion, you'll first need to pinpoint it and then select the unexpected emotion or reaction from the four mood markers with the A button. This one. Got it! Got it! Widget is registering joy when Miss Woods recalls the rubble falling on her. There must be a reason for this unexpected emotion. Miss Woods, as the rubble was falling, was there also something that made you feel happy? What? Mr. Wright, the feeling of happiness is spreading throughout Junie's heart. Keep going on this point and I bet Junie will start to calm down. Great. Let's hear what she has to say. Um, just as I was about to escape the courtroom, the bomb went off. I was so startled. I tripped. And then rubble started fall falling on top of me. I really thought I was done for. But just then, Apollo came and rescued me. Apollo? He used his own body to shield me from the rubble. So that's when he sustained those injuries. How do you feel, Junie? Did talking about Apollo give you some courage? Yes, Apollo is. Just like the sun. Strong and bright and warm. Just talking about it makes me feel like a leaf undergoing photosynthesis. And see? Your coughing stopped all of a sudden. Oh, you're right. Thank you, Thena. Noise level down to 50%. Looks like we were able to draw out some new testimony. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? But there's still some noise left, meaning there must still be some discord in Junie's heart. I guess we'll have to keep going then. Let me input this new information and update the Matrix, and we'll be good to go. You remember what to do, right? When I find an unexpected emotion, I should first pinpoint it. That's right. And then you select it from the mood markers with A. If we can find the reason for the discord in her heart, then we should be able to draw even more new testimony out. Updated information. I tried to run, but I was too slow. Before I could get away, the bomb went off. I was so startled I tripped, then rubble started falling on me. I thought I was done for. But then Apollo came and rescued me. Yeah, something else is off. Sadness. Got it. But why? You were happy when Mr. Justice rescued you, weren't you? Yes, I was really happy. But was there also something you felt sad about at the same time? Sad? The reason I ask is... When you were describing how you were rescued, we sensed a little sadness too. Oh, I think it's probably because of Bum Rap Riney. Bum Rap Riney? Well, what do you know? Something new. That's right. I... I brought my stuffed animal, Bum Rap Riney, to watch the trial with me. 
Bum Rap Riney and Phony Fanny are brothers. Who knew that the legal world could inspire a whole line of merchandise? I had Bun Rap Riney with me while I was watching the trial. But it wasn't until Apollo saved me that I realized I'd lost him as I was running away. My poor Riney, a victim of that terrible bomb. Oh, I know. You can see what he looks like in this poster. It's for the campaign to eradicate fake evidence and false charges. Phony Fanny and Bum Rap Riney, huh? Nothing against the campaign, but why an elephant and a rhinoceros? Mr. Wright, I don't sense any discord in Junie's heart anymore. Noise level zero. So I guess that means we managed to draw all of her testimony. That's right. I'll just make an update with the new info and we'll have the whole picture. So do you think her new testimony will help? Absolutely. I don't know what I would have done without you, Athena. So bum rap Riney was in the courtroom when the bomb went off. Now that we know that, it changes the meaning of that other piece of evidence. All I have to do is present it at the right statement. I was watching from the gallery with Bum Rap Riney. I tried to run, but I was too slow. Yeah, but I think I know what we need to present. The phony fanny tail. Objection! Miss Woods, I know this trial has been very hard for you. But you can relax now. You are, without a doubt, innocent. Mr. Wright, what wild assertion are you making now? My wild assertion is simply this. The two stuffed animals we were mixed up, were mixed up. The tail the defendant's fingerprints was found on wasn't that a phony fanny. It was the tail of her gallery companion. Bum rap right! Yes. <sighs> what? What nonsense is this? I could see they're both stuffed animals, yes, but they're completely different characters. An elephant and a rhino. They're as distinct as a defense lawyer and a prosecutor. But are they really so different? Both defense lawyers and prosecutors strive to protect the peace through law. Even elephants and rhinos have some similar characteristics. They're both gray, for example. Anyway, this poster is all I need to prove my assertion to be true. If I murder direct the court's attention here, you'll clearly see how the two got mixed up. You need to present the tale, right here. Take that! Well, would you look at that? The two tails are exactly the same. Yes, exactly. The two stuffed animals are based on entirely different animals. But the design of their tails is exactly the same. Ah! Yeah, who would have thought Payne had more hair behind that? Order, order in the court. As long as the possibility exists that the tail belongs to Bum Rap Riney, we can no longer consider it to be decisive proof that the defendant had the bomb. As things stand, I consider the charge against the accused unsubstantiated. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Payne? Oh, um, yes, of course, Your Honor. Ooh, that was great, Mr. Wright. You turned things right around. Yeah, it's not over yet, but at least we managed to hold out this long. I believe that brings our proceedings for today to a close. Mr. Payne, I'm afraid you'll have some serious investigation ahead of you. Yes, Your Honor. Very well. Let us reconvene tomorrow. Court is adjourned. December 17th, 11.56 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. That was so exciting, boss. We did it. True to form, you managed to just barely pull it off at the very last moment. True to form. Gee, I never knew you had such a glowing opinion of me. Thank you for everything you, you're doing. You did great, Miss Woods. You really stuck it out. And you got really brave at the end, just when we needed you most, Junie. Thanks to you, we were able to turn things around. Well, you were the one who gave me that courage, Thena. Really? <laughs> Thanks. So be honest, was I any help at all? Of course. Without you, we would have never gotten out of that tight spot. That's good to hear. I may still have a lot to learn, but you can bet I'm going to give it my all. I'll be so good that one day you call me your partner. That's what I like to hear. Analytical psychology. The ability to solve the riddles of a person's heart. Athena's true potential is beginning to really shine through now. 
Hey, where's Apollo any- Hey, where's Apollo anyway? Hmm, good question. I almost forgot about him. I assume he'd still be here in the lobby. Oh, I know. Maybe he's still in quarter number four. Quarter number four? What, what, what would he be doing at the scene of the explosion? When I came out of the lot to lobby the rest, I told Apollo about Bumrap Riney. I told him I dropped Riney in the courtroom as I was trying to escape before the blast. And then... Apollo said he had an idea where Riney might be, so we went to take a look together. Huh? I guess Apollo can be pretty nice when he wants to be. So you went looking for Riney together before you were called back into courtroom 5? Yes. I'd had some time to rest, so I was able to go and look for him. But then they called me into courtroom number 5 to testify. Apollo insisted on staying there, though. With all those injuries? I wonder how he's managing. I think Apollo might have figured something out. Hmm, wonder what it was. He told- He told me, I'm gonna look for evidence to clear your name, Juniper. Just maybe he found some new piece of evidence. Anyway, we better go and get him. Good idea. December 17th, 12.11 p.m. District Court, courtroom number four. Where are you, Apollo? Trial's over for today! Come on, I know you're... God damn. What a way to end it. Seriously. Yep. That is it for part one of Dual Destinies, or the first case. In, in the continuation, we will continue the story and hopefully see it through. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button. It means a lot. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell. I will see you then. This is Mega Man NG signing off. Peace out. Product provided. By Capcom.